Democrats in the media having a serious case of buyer's remorse as Joe Biden continues to blow his reelection chances. James Carville flat out saying this. We have a choice to make in November, and it, it isn't the choice that I was crazy about. I thought that President Biden should not run for reelection, but he did, and it's him and Trump. There's so much talent, and a lot of it is young and vigorous and energetic. I, I thought that Biden, President Biden should consider not running for the election. The New York Times is going to town on Tall Tale Joe. Finally, fact-checking Biden's history of life story exaggerations, from being a civil rights hero to cannibals snacking on poor Uncle Bozy. Besides, I used to drive an 18-wheeler. You know what I did? That's exactly right. First organization I ever joined was the NAACP. Didn't get to vote till you were 21 in those days, but I got involved in civil rights when I was 15. I, like an awful lot of people in this audience, uh, had, was the first in my family to go to college. They got shot down in New Guinea, and uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. And as Joe slows, trump mentum is picking up steam. 45 drawing huge crowds in California and Nevada this weekend. People are saying to themselves, were we better off four years ago or are we better off now? And it wasn't even close. We had the greatest economy in history. What we did in taxes, nobody's ever done. Because when I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips. People making tips. All right, Richard, before we get to you, I would like to apologize to everybody in Nevada. Very good. That's Very right. sorry about that. Right. Uh, it's a glitch in my brain. So perfect in so many other ways. Can't pronounce that <laughs> right. Go ahead, Richard. What's going on <laughs> That's here? That's your only glitch. I got a bridge I could sell you in Alaska. <laughs> um, look, I just want to focus on James, Car James Carville for a second. We spent a lot of time since I've been filling in talking about James Carville. James Carville is a political operative that's been pretty unsuccessful in recent history. Uh, in 2022, he picked a candidate in Pennsylvania that was literally obliterated. Uh, and then in 2020, he predicted that we would have the election results by 10 o'clock, and we got those four days later. Um, but let me just say this. Um, you know, when you really think about it, Here's what we know to be true. One thing that he did get right, in 1992, he had a quote that said, it's going to be about the economy, stupid. Um, and that he did get right. Um, other than that, I, I think, <laughs> you know, uh, his political operative and his ability to predict things are pretty um, awful. Um, but, and, and I think when I say that, I say this. This is going to come down to how people feel about the economy on election day or when they vote, whether they choose to vote early or they choose to vote absentee. Uh, and what we've seen over the past couple of months, we've seen record job growth. And we've seen the lowest unemployment rate in history. That doesn't take away from the fact that we are, as a country, are experiencing record inflation, right? And I think we have inflation numbers coming out in, in this month. Um, hopefully, they will tick down. We'll have a record. We'll have inflation numbers coming out next month, the month after that, and the month after that before we have the election. And that's what I think how people will vote ultimately. Um, we're going to have to wait to see what that looks like. But I think that's what the Biden campaign is going to have to talk about, what they've been able to do over the past two years to make mm -hmm. this economy work for the American people. All right, Judge, yeah, Carville's not perfect. Nobody is. No, he's awful. Okay. No, <laughs> oh, come on. He speaks for a lot of people who also did not want Joe Biden to be the nominee and thinks right. he's too old for the job. All right. I mean, you know, let's talk about Axelrod and Pluff and mm -hmm. Van Jones and the rest of them. First of all, uh, Carville is one of the top Democrat operatives. In 1992. They lit, uh, no, I think f uh, far more advanced than well, 92. Was the last election that he won? I don't want to fight with you, Richard. <laughs> Let me get out what I want to say. Okay, the truth is there has to be a reason that they keep propping up Biden. And the reason they keep propping him up, in spite of the fact that everybody is a naysayer about this fool, I mean, I had the list that thick of his lies, is the fact that they think Joe Biden beat him once, beat Trump once, is going to beat him again. But what they ignore is that the Joe Biden and 2020 is a cognitively declined uh, man today. What they don't understand is that in 2020, he had a basement campaign. And what they don't understand is that the country is totally different. There's been a dissent in America while Joe Biden has been president. And now we have the ability to compare Trump and Biden. And Americans are saying, I used to be able to buy eggs and gas and go on vacation or whatever when Trump was president. And now I don't have 
have any of those opportunities. And finally, if you listen to that sound on those hotel workers, right, Donald Trump says, you know what, I'm in Nevada, and what I want to do is I want to promote, like, no tax on tips, right? And you know what the, the culinary union comes out with? They come out and they say, basically, uh, you know, that, that they'd rather object to the tax-free tips and tell everybody to vote for Biden, and, you know, the Trump is full of it. Look, the Democrats have nothing. They don't have the policy. They don't have anything. All of a sudden, this guy went up to Mount Sinai. He got the power to be able to change uh, immigration. And, I mean, the guy is just not a credible guy anymore. G.G. I like how the media calls them tall tales, like Joe is some congenial village mm -hmm. storyteller who's going to, like, entertain the town folk with tales of fighting mysterious woodland creatures and turning <laughs> cow's milk into liquid gold. Meanwhile, Trump's, you know, uh, salesman fibs are somehow, a, you know, apocryphal or existential threats. But Joe's tales, unlike Trump's, are not harmless. Trump's, when Trump is talking about something, whether he exaggerates or not, or directionally true, this is going to be great. You know, Joe's are figments of a chaotic imagination. <laughs> An addled brain, you know, it could be dismissed if it belonged to the town fool, but not when it's the leader of the free world. So I, I'm reminded of how many times the media democratic complex would often compare Trump to a mob boss by the way he talked. You know, we got to get rid of these people. Anyway, consider how Biden's defenders portray Joe, that he's a basket case in public, but behind the scenes, oh, you watch, he's sharp as a tack. Well, this has never happened in the history of the human world. Mm -hmm. There's no human behavior like that, unless you're the head of a criminal family. A mob boss evading arrest or standing trial by pretending to be mentally ill in public. Vincent Gigante, the chin, faking <laughs> mental illness for decades to avoid prison. He, ch he would chat with parking meters and urinate in public. He did this for decades. Doesn't that sound familiar? Uh, if tr Joe is truly sharp as a tack, maybe we could listen to those her tapes or maybe yeah. it's just an act. Mm. Are you with her? Um, Nicely I done. I love that. I wanted to make those T-shirts. Uh, the other thing that the media said, well, I can't remember which headline it was, but they talked about Biden's yarns. Yes, okay. yarns. yarns. There's all those yeah. yarns. Come on over, sit down. Yeah. And do you remember the New York Times? They had a big thing where they were going to, like, they made a big pronouncement that they were going, it was going to be okay to say that Trump is a liar. Mm -hmm. And they put it on the front page of the paper. But <laughs> Biden tells yarns, of course. Um, I wanted to mention something about the age thing. So do you remember last week the Wall Street Journal had the 45 sources saying, wow, okay, Joe Biden in private meetings is having a hard time mm. just connecting the dots. And the White House press office, they went, they just sent every sort of reinforcement. And the reaction was so over the top. And they're so mad about this story. And you think, where is the anger for people about, like, mm -hmm. understanding the border issue or inflation or immigration? Like, where, where is that empathy? And you don't see it. It's only when they think that he's going to get nailed in the election because people think he's too old. Now, after that story ran, you saw someone like James Carville said it. I think I said, I believe I did, that you'll start to see the press is going to start hurting this way, and all of them are going to start writing it, and people are going to have permission now to say what they're mm -hmm. thinking. So in The Atlantic, Mark Leibovich writes this piece today about Biden's decision to run again at 81. A warning, if you print this article out, you're going to have to buy some more toner because it is long. <laughs> but this is the paragraph that matters. He says, the unwillingness or inability of Democrats to stop Biden remains an existentially risky, potentially disastrous proposition. If Biden loses in November, that's all anyone will remember him for. And that's how the piece ends. Mm. And that's how I end. Oh. <laughs> and they're telling me that James Carville, apparently watching the show, says, how many presidential elections has Richard Fowler won? <laughs> Ahead, California getting boy. up. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.